All right, guys, welcome to episode 14 of the Tactical Games Podcast. We're here uh, at the place that I'm pretty sure cancer came from. Yeah, uh, this is <laughs> We're inhaling it right now. Uh, we brought Lucas out. He's come to hang out with us this weekend. So Lucas Botkins. Lucas, what's your position at T-Rex Arms? That is a great question. I'm like a visionary guy that just figures out where we need to go, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome, awesome. Yeah. And then uh, um, well, we've got James and Nick, as always. Happy to have these two out here. And uh, we've been here for uh, about five days now. It's Friday before the match. So you guys will see this uh, after the match has happened because we've got a lot to do over the next couple of days. Um, so Lucas came in yesterday uh, in the afternoon. You drove like you did your live Wednesday night and mm -hmm. then woke up in the morning and then you guys came out right away, right? Yep. Just eight hour drive. Pretty simple. Just quick eight hour drive yeah, in the minivan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, and then we, uh, when you got in, like we got you going right away. Yeah, no, I, had, I knew that we were going to start shooting some stages, so I made sure all my kit was prepped. I got up extra early. I changed all the batteries and all my guns. I checked everything and loaded mags preemptively, and then, you know, so we were good to go. Drank cool. six rains and got on the road. And one, <laughs> and then some of these. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, so we've been here setting up the match, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. Yeah. Yeah? That's cool. What's your favorite stage that you got to bet so far? <laughs> Nick, what was your favorite stage? Um, favorite stage would be on the rooftop overlooking um, the car obstruction stage. Okay. We had all those, that, all those littered out, and then you could like loop yourself back around once you cleared all the So if somebody out. wasn't here, how would you describe that stage to them? Engagement uh, distance. Um, engagement distance. I mean, what the, the closest one was what? One, 120, 120, maybe. 20, yeah. and then all the way out to uh, 550, yeah. I think, was as far as we got. Um, but it was fun, though. I mean, I've been, I zeroed my gun on. Tuesday or Wednesday this week so yep. I've been kind of like playing around with my holes and, and kind of just getting prepped for next week when I compete um, but it's been fun like this has been a, a great event to do in prep for that just to kind of like test myself long range shooting yep. obviously I have the least amount of experience but being able to shoot with everybody and kind of take and pick and choose a little bit of uh, information and, and stuff like that has been super helpful so, so fourth floor elevation shooting down into urban terrain rubble yep. piles cars connex boxes yep. that was pretty cool yeah. yeah Gail what was your favorite so far uh, actually, I think it was that same stage, mainly because at that point, Nick and I got in sync where, you know, start of the event, he's shooting a, a different lot of ammo. He's not super experienced with long range shooting. So knowing that we have to talk yeah. in the event mm -hmm. and that one being that you have high value impacts on your first hit, you have to be in sequence. So communicating through there, it was neat watching all the teams go through there and everyone's description of the car is like, all right. Of the caddy, or you know, I don't know, you're getting your all sorts a of Suzu, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which Which making I think up is car manufacturers, yeah, looking in two completely different directions, yeah. So we, had, we had a good run there, I was uh, pretty, pretty happy with it. What would you say the worst stage was? Yeah, Lucas, well, Lucas, what was the worst stage? Oh, I don't get to say what the best oh, stage is. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody like, go through the best one. Uh, well, best stage, I, I would agree. I would describe mm. it as Benghazi. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the thing about that stage that I like, the one you guys are talking about, is it, it did require a lot more communication between shooter, both shooters. I wouldn't mm. say shooter, spotter, because we didn't really yeah. need a spotter for yeah. that. Of, uh, you know, after primary shooter moves on, has to find the next target, call it out, use some form of, you know, it's this vehicle, it's this, you know, it's above the blue connex yep. or whatever. Um, although I'd have to say co probably the coolest experience was shooting the vehicle. Yeah. Cause I've never shot a moving vehicle before yeah. or yeah. an occupant inside of one. So, uh, the fact that you guys had that and we kind of played around some of the scoring for that I maybe mean, destroyed that. Yeah. Like, that was awesome. Me. Um, yeah, that was super cool. So for the listeners that stage, uh, it started out, it's like a 450 yard road. We had to climb on top of concrete. Culvert, bunker? yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's like yeah. it's like ten a feet tall. Culvert connection. connection. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we had to climb up on top of there to start the stage. Get staged up. Started with pistol engagement. I think the pistol engagement was maybe forty to sixty yards. Two hits on BCs. Um, as soon as you were done with that and cleared, primary shooter could start engaging a car that appeared out of the wood line and came towards us. So Marathon Targets has a moving car uh, with a driver and an engine block that you can disable. Um, so it was really cool. We, we ended up, I think first we d disabled the engine block too fast. We decided that wasn't gonna be that hard to do. So we put five shots, had to be hit on the dummy in the driver's seat. And uh, that was definitely cool. I was moving at 20 miles an hour too. Was that 20? Yeah. yeah it yeah. seemed super slow. Like, <laughs> that's a radical? Really? Yeah. I didn't know it was that fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed that one. My, my favorite of the weekend, though, honestly, and it was it was the crow's nest. 
I yeah. sucked so bad at that stage. <laughs> so we, we, the, the most important thing, if you guys are new to shooting, uh, Loctite. Put Loctite on everything. <laughs> Just co-witness marks and Loctite, which Blue everybody Loctite. has told me forever, uh, but I didn't do it. Um, so that stage was really cool. Start stop plate in the middle at 280, um, and then various target distances, five for primary, five for secondary, scattered about as a team. You had to climb up into a crow's nest, which was, I don't know, what did you say? 20 feet in the air? Yeah. About 20 that. feet on, on top of a pillar, really cool exposed position. Um, and from there, first shot had to be on the start stop plate. As soon as you act, as soon as you hit that plate, you could move on and you had one shot at one of your targets that were out in the field and... Well, uh, so this place is <laughs> um, So that that we got that going for us. Um, but yeah, it was really cool to. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I like I said, I, I did terrible at that stage, but I really enjoyed the flow of that, and I was excited to see everybody get up there and kind of work through it. That stage could not have started any worse for me. <laughs> I got my pant leg caught on a bolt, and then I had a malfunction, and I'm fudging around with my rifle, and I'm trying to get my leg off, and it happened twice with my mag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed like you a, kept on like kicking Gil. That was his wrong leg. I was he had no get, idea. He just caught on a bolt and I couldn't get it off. My pants are ripped, but uh, it was still fun though. It, it was a cool stage for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, demoralizing to start the event. Oh, yeah, 100%. the worst stage to start on. Anybody that's starting on a stage, I was gonna be like, had. f this match. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no. finding the targets seems yeah. to trap everybody. Yep. That and then pacing of oh, I don't have a follow up shot. I'm limited to one round of engagement. It seemed like a fast stage, and then you stutter, you whiff a shot there, and then being able to talk back and forth. So it's yeah. helping that, that talking with your teammate was immediately exposed on that stage. All yeah. right, uh, worst stage now. Let's hear it, Lucas. That makes it sound like they were bad. No, no, not bad. The, what, 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 which one taught the, you the most? Okay, the, the stage that I think could use the most improvement there you go. Um, is probably the small window. Yeah, uh, stage. yeah, yeah. Because yep. mm -hmm. uh, one shooter is... Again, a spotter isn't necessarily necessary for that like target arrangement. So one shooter goes down me, and then the other shooter's kind of like not doing anything, kind of yep. waiting. And I think we were kind of playing around with what that stage was going to be. Yep. Um, I like that the port was awkward. Like yes. It was a very odd height to shoot from, and your laser rangefinder isn't going to work if you have something that sits really tall like the Vortex. Right. Like I think the Vortex, if anyone has a Vortex impact, they're not going to see it. Like, no. It's going to be too tall. It's it, huge, it, no matter what mount diving yeah, board you have it on. Matter. It's, it's going to hit that. Yep. Um, you know, I think there could have been some changes on that stage where the spotter is required to do certain things. And so then they're switching from running a spotter on a tripod or something down to that shooting position. Um, but the hole also just sucked. Yeah. You know, just being yeah. a tiny little thing. But uh, that and that stage was cool. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the targets were. It, what distance, same ones. It was the same cars. That's right. Uh, it was right, all right, the ones all It was a car out. array. Yeah. And that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's so sucked. about... 120 yards to 46 or 550, yeah. whatever that first uh, target is. No, I think you're right, 460, because you can't see that furthest one, and then there's from one there, that's also yeah. obstructed yeah. from yeah, the yeah. lower So nine targets port. to that port, and then you swap shooters, and the other shooter requires. Yeah. But then you reverse that, you go to the roof, and it's everyone's favorite stage. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I wonder Same why. course of fire, just <laughs> yeah. different port. Targets, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Gil, what would you think? What was the one you learned the most from this weekend? I learned the most from? I, I think the run-up. Did a couple of things. One, physically it sucked. Yeah. Two, getting to the roof and having both shooters trying to start engaging their target. Yep. Instead of seeing it hindsight, the better option would have been whoever the first shooter up is, the second shooters that get in position immediately just go to calling corrections for yep. your partner. Yep. Um, I think that probably would have put us on target a little faster. Yep. We were shooting two to three gas guns. So, you know, if I had a different. If, Someone's going to come out there and one tap that target. Yeah, for right. sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for people that aren't on their data correctly or just you know learning wind on the spot, it would have helped to uh, immediately go to spotting on that instead of trying to rush the gun. Yep. Pacing wise, I also had no idea what the time was when I got up to the tower. So right. Five minute limited time. I figured it was going to take me nine minutes to get up to the top of the tower, so I figured I'd get two or three shots in. We probably finished. We got up there. A little quicker than that. But. Yeah, we had we had two and a half, three minutes to shoot. Some some teams will have less time. Than <laughs> Nick, what was the what, the one you learned the most from? Um, know your limits. That one, I performed the worst on that one. So really? that one, yeah, just again, not knowing my. So whole know your limits, just so, so you guys understand. Uh, there's a target at 325, target at 500. I'm sorry, a bank of three targets at 325, mm -hmm. a bank of three targets at 500. 
BCs at both of them, uh, 12 inch plates and yep. eight inch plates. Yep. So basically if you hit the BC, you get one. If you hit the middle plate, you get two points. If you hit the smallest plate, you get three points. Yep. You so had to declare. You had yeah. to declare. Exactly. Yep. So you couldn't just whiff into the, the three point and, and get credit for it. Yep, exactly. So you're calling your shots. Um, but again, just not knowing my holds, uh, didn't feel super comfortable where I was shooting at. I felt like I was a little bit low, so I had to prop myself up a little bit more in a little bit more awkward position. Um, so that was probably my, my least favorite, but that's just on me for not knowing my holds and all that stuff. That was the one that I learned the most on too, because it was like, I got there and immediately <laughs> tried to deploy a tripod that I hadn't used before. And like, just my gun was everything about it. I managed to hit the second target. You hit more than free me. Free floating <laughs> on a tripod. And, uh, but we got it. We, I, we still, uh, I think, I think, uh, well, Sal and Hatcher crushed that yeah, stage. They, yeah, they, they got like 34 it. points yeah. on that one. So Hatcher yeah. just sat, I think he put his first round, no, he went all 10 rounds yeah. on the three point target yeah. and murdered it. And Sal mm -hmm. hit eight for 10 on the one point at 500. Yep. He, yeah, he when, crushed it. We did great. When you guys were shooting this morning on the rooftop, um, I, I was looking at glass on that one. You could see there was, five, six different hits on that one, on that three point target. So they yeah. were, they were peppering it. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. So now Lucas, we, we kind of dove into the match, but we didn't really talk about like how you kind of got involved with this. So, you, you know, like t very excited to have T-Rex as a sponsor this year. It's been awesome having you guys on board. It's been really awesome. See awesome. Seeing Brandon jump in. Cause he, he, after the first one, he's like, I love this. This oh, is yeah. the coolest thing. He came thing. back super excited. Good. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I'd seen him more excited about anything. <laughs> I was kind of like, this kind of sucks. Like, <laughs> <kinda> jealous. <laughs> he came back funny. super excited. He, he seemed like he was having a good time. So I, I remember, uh, we were talking about sniper challenge and I asked you straight up. I was like, Hey, just come out and shoot with me. It was like about four months ago. Yeah. And, and, uh, it was cool. Cause you've been training. How long have you been working out for? Uh, so I started, I went to this like private gym, I think it was a year and a half ago, yep. which I, I, it was a lot of extra driving. So I did like maybe two of my three sessions a week and then would sometimes cancel. And then finally that coach left and I was like, Hey, would you do a house call? So like, I, was like, yeah, I, would. So I was like, cool, let's keep working together. You just come to the house. So once we did that, then I was hitting three sessions a week consistently, yep. got my own gym set up in the garage. Um, that it's been a little over a year with that, like being more intentional yep. so yeah a little over a year that's awesome and then yeah. training specifically for this about four months but it's yeah the second i told you yep i'm in let's go uh i sent you a barrage of texts yeah. asking like what is it you said stairs and then i figured out there was a rock so i told my coach here's what we're doing yep. i think he went and saw some videos so we kind of like mm -hmm. it was up so then he changed the entire program on the fly and then it was a ton of leg work just yep. like legs and I don't like legs. I, I don't, but it was like, yeah, two two days a week was legs, and then even the third was still like half legs. So, so and I'm gonna give you a secret about like a gym bro secret. Nobody likes legs. Okay. <laughs> it's an acquired taste that takes many years to like. Yeah. There's more. Just, things yeah. are just falling out. This. Yeah. Nobody likes legs. Uh, but a very necessary thing to work okay. and to build up for strength and overall like. Core, core to extremity movements and leg strength are the mm -hmm. two things that we work on probably the most for, for our training programs. Mm -hmm. um, so now, uh, what, did, what did you think? Like Before you came here, you had an idea of what mm -hmm. Sniper Challenge was going to be. Coming here, shooting almost all the stages, what did you think of the format? You know, What did you think of, of the event so far? I really liked it. I mean, this is the first Sniper match. I got to shoot a bunch of stages for a big military match at one point and kind of followed along, although we didn't hike it like everyone else. We drove around on a thingy, so I cheated it. But, <laughs> but got to the positions. We had to find range and engage targets out to, uh, I think the first was 1,100 meters. Yep. Uh, yards. Yeah. <laughs> That's like 1,300, 1,400 yards. Yeah. Um, so that was super fun, and we still had to go through the process of looking at an ATAC like map of like roughly where the targets are in regards to the satellite imagery yep. and then like looking around for them. So that was fun. I knew we wouldn't do too much of that here, but this was much more, um, obviously we were doing it for time. Yep. We were doing some physical activity. I mean, even yesterday shooting the stages like without the ruck, mm. I mean, there's the stairs, which yep. we got up there. We had a couple minutes to shoot I yep. think somewhere around there a minute and a half. And uh, I mean, yeah, that the stairs suck. Yeah. Like, like I but, told you that though. Oh, you did. Fair warning. I, I, fair warning. <laughs> and if I hadn't, I, I said this in our video, if I hadn't trained for the last four months, I, we would have either zeroed that stage because I would have been just still coming up. Uh, or I, I think I would have made it. I would have made it slowly, <laughs> but I would not have gotten up there and shot like yeah. at all. So th my coach did a good job. I yeah. Think. That's awesome. Ready. But, um, 
no, overall, I I, I want to come back. Like, Good. I hope you guys do this. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I can you know, go faster and yep. do better. But uh, I like the format. I like what you have going on. I like that you have moving vehicles. You have some urban, like, kind of loophole shooting yep. as well. Um, the stages aren't like, uh, they're not super PRSE, right. um, which is going to upset some people that I said that, but, um, this does feel more like a sniper match where you have mm -hmm. to lug around your, all the equipment for that yeah. day. There's yeah. no, you know, there's abandonment rules and stuff like that. Um, there could be more pistol shooting, I feel like, but I know I missed two stages with pistol yeah. that we didn't yeah, shoot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also like shooting pistol yeah. and so that's something that like, what do you want to prioritize rifle or handgun? So if you really want to piss the PRS shooters off, then you put pistol in there, like more yeah. pistol. More, <laughs> all of it. Yeah, I like it. I more like pistol, pistol shooting too. I, I like having, I love two gun. Like I like yeah. shooting two gun matches a lot. Action shooting is fun. Um, but in this community, it's like pistols, a last resort. Yep. So that's kind yep. of like, we, you know, it's good that we put it in, we test it. But one of the biggest gripes I heard from mammoth and, and other matches like that is that pistol dictates the leaderboard when it should be a long range match. So that's the thing that they that. that they really want to like try to avoid. It's a necessary skill you need to have, but you don't want it to have major influence on the leaderboard. No, I like that. I mean, even just going, hey, you have to figure out like you have to carry the extra weight of a handgun. Yeah. Which for you guys carrying staccatos is like five pounds, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Carrying locks, it's like a pound. Um, and then a few mags. Like even that just changes how your kit is going to work. Like I even changed out my mag pouches. To something that would work a little better with my lumbar support on my sure. on my pack. Yep. Which normally I wouldn't have to do. I would just run my little competition stuff. Right, right. Fine. So I like that there's there's still some like necessity for running a handgun and figuring out the requirements for that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I that is a good point. If it's a long range match, then like is it a long range match? And that's one one kind of beef I have with three gun. A lot of three because I've shot some three gun here and there, and like two thirds of it is dictated by shotgun. Yeah. So like yeah, I can be yeah. a great pistol shooter. Right. And get destroyed by shotgun guys yep. who are quad loading perfectly and they're mm -hmm. daisy chaining their ammo, the stage planning for that. And then I show up as a good carbine shooter, as a pretty good pistol shooter, and I can't shoot shotgun to save my life. Right. So, um, and that's that's happened. So, um, that's kind of that's where a lot of people just don't like three gun, or you know, they don't want to get into it because they know that shotgun dictates winning in a lot of those matches. I I so. like that, and that's why I'll ne I won't say never shoot three gun. I don't shoot shotgun just because it's another expense, it's another thing, it's yep. just another, another thing, thing to learn, about. another yep. round of ammo. But like Gil loves three gun, like that's his shit. I like, also have a box of that shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that changes things. Yeah. <laughs> Distant arms, like yeah, 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 yeah. jams every third. Yeah. Round. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely going to the different action sports, figuring out like if I go to a sport that I'm good at and I just roll through the event. Yep. Who's gonna come back? Right. So, yeah, it has to be challenging. I'll tell you, my first event, Reveille Peak, got broke off. 80 seconds into the first stage, I'm sucking wind. I realized I was not in shape at all. And I signed up for two more events. Forced me to go back to the gym. And then every other event that I compete in outside of the TAC games, I'm in better shape for those. And you might not see the immediate effects of, oh, now I'm going to run faster through the stage. I'm just not as fatigued through the day. Mm -hmm. So it has residual benefits, but... Like this match in particular, um, everybody likes coming off a stage where they went one for one, they crush it, but those demoralizing stages are what brings you back. Oh, I didn't think about this particular yeah. aspect to my equipment or my yep. shooting, uh, or I'm the greatest shooter ever and my partner was a sandbag. You know, Every time we go to an event and someone's like, ah, my teammate screwed me over. Was it your teammate? It was your <laughs> lack of... I blame my gear every yeah. time it's the gear. It wasn't me. Scope, moving. Anything. Could have been something Watching else. you fight that tripod. It was, <laughs> it was really hard for me not to criticize you. You, you have no idea how bad I wanted to throw that tripod out the window. <laughs> and I didn't because there were people around. <laughs> well, watching what you were doing to that stock last night. We need that tripod as the lowest tripod With your hux on. That stage. Yeah, so that everyone else can suffer with it. I forgot. My stock also fell off my gun while we were shooting yesterday day too that was a fun thing to deal with yeah. <laughs> that was not a threat that was a, a sizing spacing issue that really truly was so that is now being held together by a piece of cardboard which made it through yeah. the day nice no yeah. issues whatsoever there you shot well today so something happened yeah, well i, I adjusted happened. my zero and it <laughs> held because i put blue loctite on my stuff you know what's the funniest part about that my father worked for loctite for like 35 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> Not mad, he's disappointed. <laughs> so I have zero excuse. <laughs> um, all right, so like again, very happy to have T-Rex Arms out here and very happy to have the team out here. You guys have been awesome in helping us with stuff, so that's very cool. Um, 
next thing we got going on is uh, Nick is finally jumping into the competitor pool for the tactical games. Yeah. So you've been on the other side now for yeah. uh, like a year and a half. Yep. Yeah. You've gotten exponentially better at shooting since you've been on the team. I don't prance anymore, so that's a that's a plus. So you still <laughs> prance. It's just different. You don't prance when you're shooting. <laughs> this is true. It's you true. still wake up like this. <laughs> Uh, so what what are you most excited about for shooting this match? <sighs> Getting so, the shit kicked out of you by Hepner or Yeah, yeah, you know, there's that's always there. Um <laughs> I, I'm really just excited to just get on the other side of the field. So like I've I've been like I've gotten lucky to get exponentially better and I'm still not that good, but being able to like spend a lot of time with Gil and a lot of time with you and being around all the best competitors in our sport has allowed me to completely shorten that learning curve. Yeah. Like, whereas it would have taken me, you know, three years, however, who knows how long to be able to get to the point I am now. Um, so that's been the, the biggest plus. Like I was supposed to compete last year in West Virginia. I hurt myself and I wasn't able to, um, but I'm glad I didn't because I still, I mean, as far as like weapons handling and being able to map stages, like I, I wasn't there and I would have been much more frustrated with my performance at that, uh, at that event. Sure. So I feel really comfortable. I'm excited. Uh, been training a lot lately, been training a lot of my weapons manipulations, been shooting matches with Gil, um, getting coaching from him a lot, which has been awesome. So, um, you know, I'm, I, I can't wait. I'm ready to get it going. Yeah. We're excited to have you. I think it's going to be cool to see how you do. Yeah. Um, and, and so what you said was, was interesting. Like you have access to a lot of people yeah. and a lot of matches and like what you've been able to get exposure to, mm -hmm. it takes people years to yeah. get. So I, I don't want to discourage other competitors from being afraid to jump in. Right. Yeah. Like you also at some point just have to be like, well, shit, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Right. Cause sure. if you don't ever do it, it's always going to be something that you're training for, but never actually doing. Exactly. Um, and, and some of it too is like, I, I know you in your head right now, and we'll, we'll check in on this in the next one. I know you mm -hmm. in your head right now have an idea of what the fatigue level is going to be, what mm -hmm. shooting under duress is. You've vetted enough stages, yeah. um, but you've always vetted stages against me or like, you, you yeah. know, like it's not like you have the guys that are in the top five in the sport that are out Correct. there. Like, and the field that you're competing against in North Carolina is pretty awesome, but it adds yeah. a whole nother layer, layer of intensity. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm pretty excited to see how you put together a weekend. No, I can't. I can't wait. And like being that Jacob's going to be there, obviously he's national champ uh, from last year. Like I'm really excited to see like how I stack up against him. Um, and he's a great dude, and he's always super forthcoming with helping teach and, and train and get. And he get lies to you advice. every time he tells you something. Yeah, I'm sure he does. I'm yeah. sure he does. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm super excited for it. Um, like you said, like being able to be around the best in the sport over the last year and a half has has been like monumental to being able to learn more. So. Um, you know, that's just something where like, and we talk about it a lot when we're stage briefing and people don't want to ask questions, like just going up and just asking anybody questions that you see them compete and you're like, Hey, I really like how you did this on the stage. Like, what was your thought process on yeah. that? Um, the community's super open, super forthcoming. So like, like you said, don't be shy from competing and don't be shy from just going and talking to somebody. If you see them out and about more often than not, they're going to want to help you. Uh, so, so Nate and Blair drum were the ones that like, before I ever competed, I reached out to on Instagram and just said mm -hmm. like, Hey, I, I really want to compete. And they like, everybody in our community is like that. If you find somebody that you think is just like, you want to talk to and they'll give you information, 99% um, of them are going to answer their DMs. They're just excited to share the story, excited to share what's happening. Um, and they, I think everybody here wants the sport to grow. They want to continue to see more people coming in and competing, building a better, bigger competitor field. Mm -hmm. Spencer Panchik coming in is pretty cool. Yeah, um, <laughs> he he's uh, for those of you that don't know, he's a CrossFit Games competitor. I think he's been there for the past five or six years. Um, he's incredibly fit. His older brother competed in, in CrossFit very early on and was very competitive for a long time. So a family of games athletes, yeah, um, very fit that has now picked up a pistol. Yeah. And last time we saw that with Hepner, with Kalipa, with all these guys coming off the games, they're like. They're, they're training, uh, it, it, like kind of the way you train. It's actually the most mm -hmm. impressive thing I think about you is, is how, like, rep not per repetitive, but how often you train, yes. how yeah. hard you train, the fact that you go to the range and you're, you're doing drills, you're there intentionally. And I've seen that about you every time mm -hmm. I've hung out with you. Like, you're very intentional. There's, there's a plan, there's a purpose. Like, everything you're doing has intention behind it. So how do you, like, how do you build that into your training? How is that something that you, like, focus on? Well, a lot of it comes down to goals, yeah, which a yeah. lot of people don't have. They're yep. just like, I want to shoot because it's fun. P I see people on Instagram doing it. And if that is your, like, if that's why you're doing it, just because it's fun, you're you're not going to get that great. Right, um, right, You're not. Right. Like, you got to have some goal for, like, you see videos of, like, top tier athletes doing things. And it's like, I want to be able to move that fast. I mean, the biggest yep. one, the biggest, I guess, mistake that I see is, 
people just don't understand the importance of moving fast, like mm -hmm. a sense of urgency. Yeah. They're like, I move from this shooting <laughs> box to this one, and they kind of like mosey on. A tactical over. turtle. Yeah, or... and I'm like, <laughs> if you want to, if, you, if you're there and you want to go there, why mm -hmm. can't you just run? Yeah. Like, yeah. Unless you're like fatigued, like I couldn't you know, do some stuff today because I was actually like tired. But if you're just shooting like normal stuff with a carbine or a pistol, like you need to start pushing yourself to move fast. Yeah. So for me, my goals starting out, and they they evolved over time. Was no, I want to be the best that I can be based on what I know right now, and that is what I'm going to push for. So yep. every rep, my coach has even said, you know, uh, he's like, hey, you don't need to push the failure on every rep. Like you actually probably don't want to do that. Yeah. I'm like, oh really? Because that's mm -hmm. I typically do that. In <laughs> yeah. shooting. Like, that's what I do. Yeah. And so. Um, that's just kind of my thing is I, I really try to be, I try to be intentional with everything. Like yep. even the, like the rifle I shot for the event here, like I was shooting that gun now for three months and yep. it's for a video, but I also am like, no, I want to compete with the, a certain gun and have enough time on it mm -hmm. yep. and do specific types of drills, mostly fundamental space stuff. Make sure my LRF is zero. Like every time I go to the range, yep. I confirm with that sucker, like every time. Um, and that's a level of, because I have a goal for like this match or what I'm doing, that mot allows me to have motivation to get better versus so many people that just go to the range and just want to... Like, how many people do you think shoot a tactical game's actual target in, in a sucky position at the range for personal training where they know they're going to have, like, 40% drop shots? I, I can I mean, tell you, fun, yeah. because right? we sell the targets, I can tell you about <laughs> <buy> some. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, it's like, you, you know, I, I would say it's only, like, 15% of our competitors. Sure. But what's the easiest way to get better? Like if you're you shooting stuff, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, it, it's a, uh, um, if you're shooting PCSL and you buy uh, USPSA targets, like you're shooting the wrong thing, right? So going after and, and, and shooting what you're actually going to shoot, practicing <clears throat> positional shooting instead of going to the range and putting 50 yards or 50 rounds down range on a piece of steel. Mm -hmm. Just seeing how fast you can shoot. Try trying to test your splits or your draw. Mm -hmm. Like your draw is important, but if you're training specifically for the tactical games, then definitely accuracy under well, dress. Well, and a perfect example was that first stage that we did after making the the first movement from the parking lot. It was you know start, run over, shoot, hand, get on, steal. Like, yep, pretty, yep, yep. Pretty simple. Come back, and then paper at I want to say it was a weird distance. Seventy. Like, uh, Seventy. Yep. Yeah. But you had triangles, so like. Easy triangle, fat area in the bottom. So if you hold the top, like it should be fine. And then inverted ones. And I'm tripoding because that's the only way to shoot that yep. stage, in my opinion, like decently, unless you're just like really good at offhanding it, you know. With a, a 20 pound rifle. Yeah. yeah mine's like 18 and a half. Yeah. So, um, so I tripoded in, but then I was inputting all this pressure into the gun with my support hand and I was dragging each shot to the left. So I had placed one, three were out. Yep. And I was like, man, that's a target. That's a, that's a target engagement type that I have not practiced from that position. And what people don't get is like the fundamentals of shooting generally carry over, like in most cases. Yep. But there are like specific things that if you practice them, you will be better at. It's kind yeah. of like playing a video game. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Like if you know how to play a first person shooter, you can play any first person shooter. Yeah. But if you know the maps to a specific first person yep. shooter, you have an advantage over <clears throat> other players who've just played a different game yep. and they just know the WAS mouse like controls. So like we shot all sorts of stuff today that I have not done in any sort of like timed like you know situation, even on my range where like the first stage going up the ladder and then I have to shoot the start plate to continue. Yeah. And then wait. Like that jacked me up because I was like, okay, I have to wait for him. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I asked to shoot this target and then this and that's just completely new and different. But now that I've done it once Next time, I now know that's a thing, yep. and I'm gonna. It's gonna be way easier next time. So the first time you do it, yeah, it's gonna suck like most times, uh, but then you understand the rhythm of how yep. that type of match and stage or target type is. So I need to shoot those targets when I uh, get back. I always said this place reminded me of Rust. Do you yeah. remember the map oh, Rust? I, yeah. Yes, one v one Rust. One yeah, of the best. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go, yeah. That's uh, um, all right. So uh, last thing we're gonna talk about today. Pretty exciting thing coming up. Um, we are, uh, what do you want to say about it? How do you want to talk about Don't it? Don't get me in trouble, man. Oh, God. Amanda's not here, and I, I was going to wait for Amanda to do this. But um, we are, uh, we're going to be opening up our headquarters. So the Tactical Games uh, headquarters is going to be uh, opening up probably end of August uh, or uh, middle, beginning of August. Um, we're going to have a training facility there, retail facility there, um, really, and we're going to be there. It's yep. going to be our new workplace every single day. We'll have all our equipment there and mm -hmm. pretty stoked about is? that. It's going to be in uh, Georgetown, Texas. 
Yep. So uh, about 45 minutes north of Austin. Um, yeah, we're really excited about it. And yeah. uh, there'll be more info to come on that, but it's definitely something that we're really looking forward to. It's about 15 minutes away from, from uh, Staccato Ranch, which is our, uh, our range that we shoot at. Yep. Um, so very excited to be able to have a place that we call home, a place to have seminars, a place to really start to get our our training brand like taking off to the next level for mm -hmm. uh, for getting people exposure to to the sport, getting them fit, getting them interested in shooting, and uh, getting them better at shooting with great instructors. So we've got an incredible instructor base, I think, um, from the people. So maybe we can get Lucas out there one day teaching a course. And I'll come down. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll but, teach pistol and carbine. Yeah, there you go. Range, give me a few more years. <laughs> we have Gil out more there. Matches, yeah. I mean, with between between Gil, Sal, Hepner. Jared, like all the people that we have in our local network and in our training network that had the opportunity and the ability to come out and instruct there, um, we're going to be able to do it and offer it at a better price point than what we've had in the past for our camp. So a lot more accessible to a lot more people, which is something that we're excited about, not just... Uh, uh, and we didn't do any sponsorship calls today for our corporate shills. What do we, uh, what do we want? Anybody? Anything we're trying, yeah, trying to get? The trap one you used... <laughs> yeah, we won't, we won't talk about that one. Anytime somebody has a hiccup on a stage with ammo or any sponsored gear, I'm like, hey, what are you using? And they name drop it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for tuning into the podcast, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.